This second module covers other version 21 developments and new features, with a focus on Kubernetes Edition, the automation engine, and a few other items. Kubernetes Edition, or AAKE, is an install package designed specifically for Kubernetes environments with cluster-based infrastructures and cloud deployments as main drivers for the initiative. AAKE contains a set of tools to manage pre-built container images hosted on our public container registry. This means that we're downloading and installing atomic automation in a virtual container. It's much faster, far more reliable, and brings many benefits like improved load balancing, workload management, deployment automation, and much more. The automation engine has seen a fair number of important new features. The TLS SSL protocol secures connections between the automation engine, the Unix and Windows agents, and Java-based components like AWI. The protocol imposes much stricter rules for authentication and encryption and is a major security improvement. Some of the processes have evolved, namely the JCP, REST, and JWP. JCP is no longer the REST endpoint, but serves as the endpoint for TLS components instead. This meant developing a new process for REST, and so now we have the REST process. JWP takes on several new roles. We'll see the impacts on configuration and AWI access. TLS Gateway is a new component that provides translation services between TLS SSL and non-TLS agents with a focus on file transfer processes. User passwords are now stored as hashes for improved security. When you upgrade to version 21, existing passwords are migrated automatically. The LDAP service has to be active to log in through LDAP, and the Unix agent is now a single process. We'll explore a number of improvements brought to the REST API, the Action Builder function has been enhanced, and finally, the passwords are now encrypted in Infrastructure Manager. Kubernetes is an open source system that supports deployment and management of applications and containers. Unlike virtual imaging, containerized applications are not restricted by limitations and resources assigned to a VM, say CPU or RAM. They only contain application elements like binaries without the need for an operating system. Provisioning means downloading containerized applications and spreading services, resources, and configuration elements across separate infrastructure elements. This type of approach greatly simplifies and accelerates application deployment, enhances security, and brings greater load balancing and fault tolerance. It also facilitates workload and capacity management. These are core tenants of cloud infrastructures, and so of course Kubernetes has become a major player in this space. Deploying atomic automation in a Kubernetes cluster means deploying a set of atomic tools that make it possible to log into our public container registry, an atomic repository of sorts, and download and deploy atomic automation as a containerized application. This is a bare bones representation of a Kubernetes infrastructure. We have one or more clusters, each containing one or more pods, each containing one or more containers in which we deploy the application components. Services like the database are dedicated entities decoupled from the pod hosting mechanism. Configuration elements are stored in files called config maps, and secrets are a type of configuration object that stores confidential information. That includes the public registry login information, database connections, and user accounts for client 0 and 100. Networking aspects, such as accessing atomic automation from the outside, are configured in ingresses. Finally, the act of downloading and deploying the atomic containerized application is called a job, which of course can be automated and executed repeatedly and on a large scale. Version 21 imposes the TLS SSL protocol, which represents a major shift in atomic security apparatus. The purpose of TLS is to safeguard network communications through encryption and authentication using public key cryptography and certificates. The infrastructure relies on a set of certificates which contain all the relevant information, key combinations, authorized hosts, and more. These certificates ensure that source and destinations are known and can be trusted. They guarantee that data can only be decrypted by the right parties at both ends of the data exchange. Otomic can use three types of certificates, self-signed, internal certificate authority or CA, and public CA. We deploy a key store or server certificate and make it available to the AE host. 
These files contain the public private key and the host information. This enables TLS for JCP and REST. AE is capable of processing encrypted communications. We generate a self-signed or root certificate, which we deploy to the component hosts. This contains the public key information. It guarantees that they communicate securely with AE over TLS. These processes, in turn, handle the communications internally with the other server processes. Some of the AE processes have evolved. Prior to version 21, the JCP served primarily as an endpoint to the REST API. It's no longer the case. The implementation of the TLS SSL protocol meant Atomic needed an endpoint for TLS components, namely Windows and Unix agents, and Java-based components. That's now the JCP. This is reflected in the start commands. We're still relying on the UCSRVJP jar file. Prior to version 21, JCP took the dash rest extension. This extension is now dash JCP. This is also reflected in the TLS SSL agent INI files. TLS components no longer connect to the CP host. They point to JCP instead, with the secure WebSocket port defaulting to 8443. The evolution of JCP meant we needed a dedicated process for the REST API endpoint, and so we have the REST process initiated with UCSRVJP and the dash REST extension. JWP assumes new roles, which are set in client 0 in AWI. We can even rank these roles to assign specific JWPs to queues and balance the load across multiple JWPs. The JWP assumes the AUT role for authentication. It handles TLS SSL agent authentication, LDAP, and Kerberos. The PER for period handles SLAs, telemetry, and performance management. UTL for utilities focuses specifically on deleting clients from the configuration. IDX is for indexing and Lucene search. This means administrators can enable or disable a specific role for a JWP. You can rank them in order of priority, which means that one JWP can be dedicated to indexing, while another on cyclical task management. It will also tell you how many JWPs have assumed responsibilities associated with a particular role. Finally, the table shows if JWPs are dedicated to specific roles and how many. AE has an internal process availability check. It checks that sufficient JCP and JWP process resources are available before allowing a user to log in. Even once they're connected, this type of failsafe can prevent users from performing certain tasks because of a lack of resources and users are notified. It's fully automated and requires no configuration. Version 21 introduces the TLS gateway. TLS SSL communications are limited to a subset of agents. This means TLS and non-TLS agents need to cohabitate and share file transfer services. TLS SSL agents are version 21 Unix, version 21 Windows, and version 21 Java. The purpose of TLS Gateway is twofold. First, it powers file transfer mechanisms between TLS and non-TLS agents. Second, it provides a CP port for non-TLS agents when no conventional CP service is available. The TLS Gateway is an external component which installs, configures, and authenticates the same way as a Java agent. It requires INI configuration and TLS encryption. User passwords are now stored as hashes using a new algorithm. If you are upgrading from an older version, your existing passwords are migrated automatically. Prior to version 21, once you had logged into Atomic via LDAP, your password was cached in the database, effectively making it possible to bypass the LDAP service. That was also true for user object synchronization. This was a security concern and it's been addressed. The LDAP service is now a permanent requirement when logging in, and login objects must be assigned when using the synchronize function. This is an important development for Unix administrators. In prior versions, the Unix agent process would be started with root privileges, but spawn a listener process with the nobody user to handle incoming communications. Incoming socket connections never ran under roots. By extension, listener would handle tasks that did not require root privileges. This has changed. The Unix agent runs under a single root process. 
This is made possible without loss of security by the fact that version 21 Unix agents are TLS enabled. The AE REST API has been enhanced, starting with the Open API. The API reference was rewritten using state of the art Swagger and Open API and has a new look and feel. Also, passwords encrypted with the Atomic Utility UCB Crypt are now supported for inbound REST API authentication. This does not mean we support REST authentication, but we did fix the issue of proprietary encrypted passwords. Endpoints have been added to the REST API to support a number of functions. This addresses mass import and export of AE objects, agent creation and deployment, and the loading of RA solutions. Finally, you can now use the REST API to execute objects at activation time. Also, the ZOS event monitor can now use extended filter criteria. This shows the new endpoints. Folder objects is for the mass import and export of objects. You can also see the TLS certificate endpoints. And finally, this is an example of an RA solution upload. Prior to version 21, your analytics dashboards presented data that did not refresh automatically and could be obsolete. Refresh was manual. We can now set an auto refresh for each widget, depending on the urgency. We've aligned Action Builder with the rest of the solution. We're now able to open action items in separate browser tabs with Control Double Click or Middle Click. Regular Double Click opens in the same tab. We changed the Edit button to Open so it's consistent with the rest of the product. If you select multiple actions and click Open, they each open in separate tabs. Finally, if you delete, you are prompted for confirmation. 